Okay. Stephanie Pollack, who's the Secretary of Transportation of the OTR Pop Quiz. Question three. Heightened security and more surveillance were ordered for the Pops Esplanade concert this year. What new surveillance device were concert growers, concert goers forbidden to bring to the concert? Drones. D-R-O-N-E-S. No fly zone, by the way, as you would as you would expect, issued for unmanned aerial vehicles. And very important And too. very important to do that. What is the name of the former Boston Pops conductor who first organized the outdoor concerts at the Esplanade? Arthur Fiedler? You know, I should have said at the beginning of this, you're welcome for all of these. <laughs> <laughs> in, basketball, in basketball, these are called layups. Question five, and here's our Independence Day gift to you as if the previous four weren't. What is the name of the Tchaikovsky piece now associated with the fireworks on the Esplanade and elsewhere? The 1812 Overture, my favorite ding, part ding, of the year. You right, went five for five. You know what this means? <laughs> you have to come back soon so that we can give you a real OTR pop quiz. <laughs> all right, well, one. I appreciate the fake one. one, and I'd be delighted to come back and try There we go. Lot. That's the spirit. Um, so, moving the conversation to less hilarious uh, subjects, fair hikes. Everyone always worries about it. You've been <coughs> in office for six months now. How soon do you think it'll be before we see fair hikes and how big? So, right now, the law in Massachusetts says that the MBTA cannot increase fares by more than 5% every other year. There was a 5% fare increase as of July 1st, 2014. So, we can't do anything to fares until July 1st of 2016. That said, fares is actually an area that I studied and researched and worked on before I was secretary. And it's not just what the individual fares are, but what are we trying to do with fares? Who are we trying to help? Who are we trying to get to pay? You know? And so the T is required to have a fair policy, and that hasn't been revisited in years. So I think what our plans are is let's revisit the policy. Let's have a public conversation about what our fair policy is trying to do. Then when we have to look at fares themselves later in 2016, we'll do it in that framework. So that's what I've asked my staff to do is start talking about policy before we start talking about dollars. So you would like to change the structure of fares before July 2016? Well, I'd like to have the conversation with folks. So for example, we charge, we give a big discount on passes mm -hmm. relative to what we charge per trip. Is that the right thing to do? Is that the wrong thing to do? We haven't asked those questions in a long time. Some of the commuter rail folks, if you're pretty far out on the commuter rail, between their parking costs and your monthly pass, it's hundreds and hundreds of dollars. We just have to have those so, conversations. So you want to have this conversation well before July 2016, which is by right now, according to your regulations, the next time that you could raise fares. Exactly. I, I, want, I want to. Do you, do you listen to the radio? Have you listened to the radio ads by the Carmen's Union? I have heard them. So and they, they they start out patting, as you know, the administration on the back for the willingness to upgrade the system, but insisting privatizing their work is the wrong way to go. Do, 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 are they effective to you? Do they, do they reach you? We're not trying to privatize the work in the sense that I think that the unions are worried about. We're not going to close our garages and have some private sector company dispatch and, and, and drive all of our buses. The T has very little capacity. Their ability to operate every day, right, is fragile. That's why we lost it in the middle of the winter. There's a lot of things that need to get done. They're not getting done. But the state law limits our ability to use private sector companies, many of which will be in Massachusetts and employ Massachusetts workers, to do things that literally the T's current workforce can't do. Give us two, one or two examples. So we have T bus drivers driving 40 foot buses at 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday to provide late night service with 15 people on a bus, 8 people on a bus, 6 people on a bus. I don't own a 14 seat van, right? I could go to the private sector. Companies have employee shuttles with these little vans. They sit empty on the weekends. We could pay a lot less. We, we pay over $20 a trip to provide bus service late night on Friday and Saturday So are you night. saying the Carmen's Union is being a little paranoid? I think that there was a time in the past that the T was talking about privatization in the sense that they wanted to sort of wholesale turn the system over to the private sector. I'm assuming that that's what they're sort of reading into it. But, you know, the governor and I have said this clearly. This is not about taking jobs away from the existing workforce. This is about finding cost-effective ways to give riders the transit services they need and deserve. Stephanie Pollack, thank you for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Great to have you in OTR this morning. Our thanks to the Transportation Secretary for making her first appearance. First of many, by the way. We're going to commit her to it right now here on OTR. And she smiled. That's good. They had Republican Donald Trump remains unbowed by his Latino rant. How's that playing on the street?
Does he seem to you a viable presidential candidate? He just um, comes across as a celebrity to me. 